So, I have some interesting news about L.A. Noir. This comes from Japanese Nintendo, who has been... It's kind of like a Tumblr uh, site, but what they do is they translate Japanese news websites. So, Japanese Nintendo themselves isn't the source of this information. It's a bunch of news sites in Japan. But, uh, in LA, L.A. Noir for Switch, in L.A. Noir for all of the current consoles, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, is releasing on December 7th in Japan. So, don't get confused by the date here. It is November 14th worldwide, but Japan is obviously uh, taking a different date for it, for probably translation reasons. And uh, it says, L.A. Noir is set for December 7th. Rockstar Games Japan will publish L.A. Noir on the 7th of December for Nintendo Switch in Japan, price of 5,389 yen, containing all five DLC packs. Touch Operation when removed from the dock, Gyro Operation in Joy-Con mode, 1080p in TV mode, and 720p in portable mode. Trailer coming soon. So, obviously... We shouldn't necessarily be surprised by uh, this. There's a lot of people out there um, that that seem to be surprised. You know, as I'm reading threads about this on NeoGAF, quite a few people are are, are kind of almost shocked that it can run at 1080p. And it's weird because L.A. Noir is a last generation game, and there seems to be this running reputation that oh, what the Switch's CPUs are 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 faster than the Xbox 360? No, no, that can't be. Yeah, they are. So <laughs> it's. People still seem to underestimate the power of the Switch, but wh whatever. I'm not here to defense for Switch at this point. I think it's just really interesting uh, that it seems that Rockstar here, uh, who is obviously part of 2K, is taking full advantage of the Switch for L.A. Noir. And it's great we're getting all five DLC packs. It does suck that the physical version on Switch costs $50. That Nintendo tax, $10 more than the other systems. I'm hoping that the digital version is going to be $40 like everybody else. I don't know if I'm going to buy it digitally, but it's still really cool. But what I like about it, more so than talking about, you know, we always talk about resolution and frame rate and all this stuff, and we don't even know what the frame rate is. So forget frame rate and resolution for a moment. I mean, this is obviously what we want all third-party games to be like, but at the same point, this is an older generation game, so it's less demanding. Having all the DLC packs is awesome, and I think that's just a standard at this point. Uh, and I think there was 21 uh, cases in L.A. Noir in the base game, and each DLC pack added a new case, so there was f you know five extra cases, so 26 total cases. L.A. Noir is just a really fun game, um, but the fact that they've customized it for touch operation only when removed from the dock, which means it is also optimized for not having touch optimization while docked, and gyro operation in joy-con mode so motion controls i mean motion shooting in this game oh man that's that's going to be a huge advantage for people playing it on switch because believe it or not motion controls for shooting uh like any sort of shooting game has advantages over traditional controls and i know some people uh will remind me well but Nate, you you don't use the motion control splatoon that's that's a different kind of motion uh, you know it's still gyro aiming but it's a different type of thing uh the gyro aiming with the joy cons is more of a point and, point and shoot kind of thing and that's what call of duty did with the wii and call of duty on wii uh was vastly superior in terms of shooting controls than on the other systems that was the one big advantage we had uh, but yeah, it's really cool that L.A. Noir is getting this full treatment on Switch, and I'm pretty excited about that fact. Now, obviously, as this is all coming out, there was a person on, on NeoGAF named Vern who uh, is saying they have some sources. I can't verify anything. Uh, so I don't even know if you want to call this a rumor. Uh, they're not even willing to say anything specifically. Outside of that, they're noting that Rockstar Games uh, seems to be as committed to Switch uh, from based on his internal sources as Bethesda is. And we know that Bethesda has three big games. Two, uh, one you know old-gen game in Skyrim, uh, one current-gen game that's also a little older in Doom from last year. And obviously we know that they have wolfenstein the new colossus which is a brand new game that hasn't even released yet coming as well to the platform and on top of that if rockstar games is kind of in that mold la noir coming is obviously you know like their skyrim 
they could release Grand Theft Auto V, which you could argue would also be kind of like their Skyrim because Grand Theft Auto V is one, you know, a hugely popular game like Skyrim, even more so, uh, and also released on old generation platforms, which is makes it easier to port to Switch in a good format. But uh, it also would indicate that Rockstar obviously has something besides Grand Theft Auto V coming to the platform. And we don't, this isn't even confirmation Grand Theft Auto V is coming. We don't know that Grand Theft Auto V is, but if Rockstar Games is supporting the Switch as well as Bethesda, or at least internally uh, has plans to support it as well as Bethesda is, you would assume Grand Theft Auto V is coming. Um, and on top of that, something else. I don't know if it's Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, there's supposed to be an announcement for Red Dead Redemption 2 with a new trailer on the 28th. Um, just in a couple days, the same day that Golf Story comes out on Switch. Uh, so we'll see. You know, I, I highly doubt we're going to see a Switch announcement uh, for Red Dead Redemption 2. But you never know. I think Red Dead Redemption 2 was just too far along in development to even bother to consider Switch. Uh, and for anyone thinking, oh, maybe they'll bring the original Red Dead Redemption to Switch. Apparently, this has been reported on uh, by the actual developers on the game. The code in Red Dead Redemption, the original game, is a massive mess. It's just, it's bad. It, the game would almost need to be completely recoded to release again. That's how bad the coding was uh, in that game and how mismatched it was. And I'm not exactly sure why that happened. Uh, but one thing I wanted to bring up here towards the end of the video, a couple things actually... Uh, that are, that are kind of well, one. I guess one's kind of related to this because you know the 1080p, 720p. Uh, sometimes when we're talking about games, and I'm guilty of this as well, uh, we have to remember that all of us talking about it here, we're not game developers in general. Uh, game developers aren't coming out and making big public hullabaloo about things or let, or giving us more information because they don't want to hear backlash. You know, a, a lot of times fans will be like, man, you know, the, the devs are being lazy because they didn't do this or lazy because of that or lazy because of this without any understanding of development. Um, I've seen a lot of criticism over the microtransactions uh, for Shadow of War. And I understand the criticism of those microtransactions. I kind of have the same criticism of microtransactions in NBA 2K18. But to turn around and say, oh, that, make, that made the devs lazy uh, is silly because the devs didn't make that choice. We have to understand the difference between the actual developers and publishers. Oftentimes, publishers are the ones pushing the microtransactions. Devs, they don't give a crap. They, they, they want to make the best possible game they can. They don't want to implement these money-making schemes. This isn't something that developers care about. They usually don't get any kickback from it. It has zero benefit to them, but they're required to do it because the publisher paying to make the game wants that stuff in there. So sometimes we have to back off that as well. And also when we're talking about even with the Switch, where we have some developers um, having issues trying to take advantage of things in docked mode, we have to understand that it's not like you just flip a Switch and everything just works, right? Development of video games is difficult. Even at the indie level, at the AAA level, at all levels of game development, it is very difficult. And people like me and people like you and people like you know, all the people that watch these videos don't have that internal, that in-depth knowledge of game development to fully understand how difficult it is. So when I criticize, and when we, we all criticize things in gaming, we need to take it, uh, you know, from an outsider's perspective. We need to understand it's an outsider's perspective because we're not on these development teams understanding what the real issues are. That doesn't mean that criticism can't exist. That doesn't mean that we can't want better. Uh, you know, when we complain about microtransactions, just don't blame the developers, blame the publishers. Like, NBA 2K18, I should be mad at 2K the publisher, not the developers that worked hard on the game. Uh, but I can be, you, you know, that doesn't mean you can't be critical, you know, of bugs and all these different things. There are things that you can be critical of that should have been caught in development. Uh, but, again, we also don't understand crunch and where publishers might not be allowing the developers the time to do it. And NBA 2K18, Madden, and games like that are understandably, with these yearly releases, under a lot of crunch. And so there's going to be more issues with those games than probably should be. Uh, you know, if I had it my way, there'd probably only be a brand new sports game released in every series every other year. So there's time to work out all the bugs and you can just keep updating the game for the following season, um, implement new features through digital you know dlc packs or something uh that's just how i would handle it but again that's just me now when talking specifically about 
uh, L.A. Noir or Doom or anything. I know there's people that are upset. Oh, Doom is a dynamic resolution that drops to 540p. We don't understand how difficult this stuff is to get working on Switch or get working on any platform. Uh, sometimes you just need to sit back and appreciate gaming for what it is, right? Regardless of resolution or frame rate or bugs or this and that, we all play games for fun. And I think sometimes we forget that when being ultra critical about games. And I forget that at times as well. I am just thrilled as a Switch owner that I'm going to be playing these third-party games along with the big Nintendo games coming out. I have not had a platform from Nintendo to be able to do that really since the Super Nintendo back in the day. A little bit on the N64 side of things, but uh, still, most of the games I played on the N64 side of things were, were console exclusives. I didn't play a lot of third-party multi-platform games on there besides Madden. Um, and uh, who can forget the old Quarterback Club 98 and Quarterback Club 99. But yeah, I'm really excited about uh, these games coming to Switch. I'm appreciative of them. I'm, I'm going to reserve judgment until I have them in my hands to play. But everything is sounding good. I'm excited about the DLC packs and the fact it's taking full advantage of the unique features of the Switch. I mean, it, I, they didn't announce HD Rumble support. I wish that would have been announced as well. Uh, but yeah, the, they're giving Switch proper treatment, at least what I feel with LA Noir. I feel like Doom is probably doing the best that Panic Button is able to do with it at the moment. Um, I'm pretty happy these games even exist on Switch. Now, the last point I'm going to get to, and this is completely off topic, uh, but I felt like addressing it just because uh, it, it felt like it needed to be addressed because anytime something happens at the channel and I don't have an open conversation about it, there's going to be some criticism. And the last video that we did had me on camera, which isn't like a first, like I've been on camera before. Uh, but there was a, some criticism of the format of the video, me on camera just talking. And I, I understand that that format's not for everyone. Just like this video right now that I'm doing with gameplay, uh, albeit probably pretty bad gameplay of Sonic Mania, uh, is, is, is not a format that everyone appreciates either. A lot of people just listen to YouTube videos. Like they'll start a YouTube video and they'll go off and do other things on the computer and just listen to it in the background. Whereas some people like to actually watch the video. Like the Easy Allies podcast, um, I, that's not, you know, most podcasts I like to just listen to. There are podcasts I like to physically watch. Like I have it on one of my monitors while I'm doing things uh, because I just enjoy their personalities. And I feel like their personalities come through in their body motions as well. Um, and, and just watching how they react to each other is a lot of fun to me. Now, when it comes to this channel, obviously a lot of you guys are here either because you enjoy the news I report, you enjoy my takes on things, or in general you just enjoy my personality when it comes to talking about Nintendo. And I love that. But I feel like my personality comes out even more when I'm on camera. Now the reason I haven't been on camera a ton is because I don't have a proper uh, recording situation to always be on camera. And with my kids and how loud it can get in the house, uh, sometimes it just doesn't make sense for me to record that way. So it's a lot easier for me to just do an audio recording and then put some gameplay footage on top. So I, I don't want that to be a norm though. I want to be on camera and I want to improve my on camera presence. I want to improve the presentation. I don't want it to just be me on camera talking away and talking your head off the whole time. I want to be more professional about it. I want to present related gameplay clips, related images, uh, bring in even some of the gameplay that I do now. Uh, like when I'm talking in general about Switch, there's no reason that I, you know, if I'm, let's say I'm talking about a third party story like this one on Switch, there's no reason I can't draw in gameplay of other third party games. You know, I mentioned NBA 2K18. I could show NBA 2K18 on Switch games gameplay uh so or some of the doom gameplay or, or whatever i could show gameplay clips with also me being on camera and kind of splice it all together uh one one guy that really comes to mind and you guys probably don't like him is michael pactor um yeah he used to do the pack attack now he does some other show with sifted and that's what they do he's on camera talking the whole time but they cut away from him and show gameplay clips or related images and stuff and that's kind of something i feel like i want to do in my format when talking about specifically news but even you know some of my more discussion oriented pieces i basically want to take all my various ways that i do things and combine them together uh over time here and yes that does mean videos take longer to put together and longer to edit and maybe i don't don't get out as many videos as i currently do but i also feel like it ups the quality the context and helps push the conversation forward and will make people actually want to watch the the video itself 
because those are the kind of videos I like watching versus just listening to it in the background. Not that there's anything wrong with listening to it in the background, and not that I'm going to completely abandon the format of this video either. But yeah, um, there's also a bunch of criticism in the last video because of my framing of innovation uh, and gimmicks. Uh, those were really the two words that set people off because <laughs> it was kind of a news report on what Reggie said, and then I kind of disagreed that Nintendo's an innovative company, and I talked about gimmicks, and I talked about all this stuff. And people didn't like my definitions of gimmicks, my definition of uh, innovation. And I understand that definitions of words normally aren't up for debate uh, and that there's multiple forms of innovation and uh, that gimmicks have this negative context generally because some, a lot of the definition of gimmick can be negative, but there's also a positive, positive to uh, the gimmick definition as well that most people never talk about. Uh, innovation can also be an invention, uh, but it doesn't need to be an invention. It's just a really crazy, complicated stuff, and a lot of people say I didn't do my research, I don't know my stuff. Um, and that's fine. I obviously can't change the opinions of people out there. Just like you guys can't change my opinions on how I view things. Well, regardless of the terminology being used, whether it's innovation or gimmicks or, uh, you know, w whatever other terms might come up in the future, as long as I clearly explain, and this is where I, how I've always felt, as long as I clearly explain how I am defining X and Y, which I felt like I did in that video. If uh, This is how I define in innovation. This is how I define gimmicks. And when you, when you have the context of how I'm using the word, even if you think that's the wrong context to have, let's start focusing more on the conversation that I'm having, the points I'm making. Uh, there were so many people that thought because of what I said, uh, about innovation and gimmicks that I was being negative about Nintendo. That entire video was positive about Nintendo. I was singing their praises from the high heavens um, about what they do. I just disagreed with a term that Reggie used. That's it. And I even opened up the floor and said, you're free to disagree with me. And I'm cool if people disagree with me. I just, I hope in the future... Uh, when I provide clear explanations for these kind of terms, even if you think I'm using them wrong, you can at least get more context into what I'm saying and not get, I guess, triggered. I guess that's probably what happened. A lot of people got triggered by what I said. If, if they really thought that video was negative, that means they really didn't listen to anything else I said once they heard a certain word. Um, and I hate that. I hate that. And maybe I'll just avoid using those terms in the future. I don't know, but whatever i have a good time doing what i do this is some awesome news about la noir third parties on switch going awesome oh, and man golf story i can't wait golf story two days two days folks and i'll finally be playing golf story on my switch anyways folks i'm nathaniel ruffle jance from nintendo prime if you like this video you know what to do and if you dislike the video hit that dislike button subscribe for more and as always folks i will catch you in the next one